Hello and welcome to Azaz. That's Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. This is Issue 7, and I am Brett Martin from Zanata Consulting, and I am joined by Tyler Colts, Josh Oliver, and Greg Belknap, and we are here to answer your questions. And with that, let's get right on into the first question. Uh, yes, this question comes from Lucas Samaras from a post on Club Zanata, our internal community. Well, not internal in terms of Zanata, but it's a Zoho community made by Zanata. Uh, Lucas asks, in Zoho subscriptions, I set up an integration to actively sync with the Zoho CRM, but I'm not sure how to display Zoho subscriptions in Zoho CRM. Lucas had a couple uh, other, uh, you know, contacts to his uh, question talking about, they, they did set up the uh, integration by going to the settings, marketplace, uh, enabling the finance suite, uh, saying that they're having trouble seeing the subscriptions for a given contact on the actual contact record of the CRM. Now, I do have a screen share here. Uh, obviously, I'm not in Lucas's system, so I don't know exactly what he is or isn't seeing. Uh, but there should be, when you enable the Zoho Finance Suite, there should be a related list for... Uh, actually, there should be one for Zoho Finance and then a separate one just for Zoho Subscriptions. Um, so it could be that Lucas might just be seeing the Zoho Finance one and seeing that that's just estimate sales orders, uh, invoices, and packages. Uh, my guess is that uh, they may just need to enable the related list. So on the related list over here on the left, click those little three lines, and you can organize uh, the order of all the various related lists as well as any unselected. So as you can see, we have just a ton of of related lists uh, in this system here, this demo account. And sometimes your related lists can get lost in this doggy pile. Uh, so you may just need to go through and clean this list up, uh, find those subscriptions in there, uh, maybe move it up a little bit higher. You can move it up as high as to right below the notes field. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully that's Hopefully that's what's going on. You just need to enable a related list. So best of luck, Lucas. All right. This one comes from Beat Z, and he says the search function in CRM does not allow to search for everything related to account. When I have an account in Zanata and I search Zanata Brett, it would show me the contact with the name Brett, but it will not show me the notes, something I added, something Brett mentioned. If I've defined everything on the Zanata account related to click. I need to go to email, search for all emails related to an account where click was mentioned. Go to desk and search for all tickets where click was mentioned, on and on and on and on and on. Are there any options to make searching an account easier? Yes, BZ, there is. Um, Zoho has actually has an application. If you go to search.zoho.com, and I'll sh if you want to share my screen, I'll show it to you. And... Basically, when you go to search.zoho.com, this is what you get. A very basic, empty screen. It's got the apps that you can search across over here. And I'm going to set up a demo for Archer. So I'm going to do this search for Archer. And basically, it's going to pull in everything. I set up some test things here. So it's got click. One of the cool things about this is, is you actually could just click continue here and you're in click and you can start typing. You can go into the CRM. And it's going to show you the basics of that record inside the CRM. You can go into books and it will show you that contact info in books as well. I did a desk ticket and you can see the actual desk ticket inside of, uh, of here as well. You can look at the account inside of desk. You can look at the contact inside of desk. I created a document in work drive and uh, just titled it Archer. So I want to have the words Archer in there. So the Archer hotel and it found it and in notebook, I uh, typed a little note called Archer and the Archer Hotel app is great. And it basically was able to find these things and pull them over into one consolidated search. So you can do these things as to specifically pulling in notes from the CRM. Uh, it, I did not test that, but I believe this will actually look at that as well, but it does tie in with notebook and with the new notebook extension, maybe you'd want to look at that as well. But at least this saves you from having to go from one application to another application to another application to search. And guys, I think this one was a relatively new one. Uh, I think that this was released what, just, uh, I don't know, was it six, eight months ago? Something like that. I know it was in beta for a very, very long time. 
Yeah, it's not been around for too long, and and you'll probably find odds and ends that it doesn't search. If so, if you find something in there that doesn't come up when you search for it there, I'm sure Zoho would love to know about it because I know their goal, Brad, and and we talked to him, I think, about this a while back, is to give you more of a consolidated place to do these types of searches, right, and not have to go across every application. Um, you know, I will yeah. say the, if you kind of have your CRM and all your applications set up to roll up to that CRM account, oftentimes that's what I do. I just go there, right? And I, I kind of search through those related records just from within the CRM. Um, but yeah, search.zoho.com might be a good way to uh, to do this. Uh, I got a question for you, Brett. Uh, were you able to notice, uh, like with the Zoho notebook, uh, entry there if the note if the notebook entry title was not archer do you think that result still would have come up because you mentioned archer in the content of the note or was it the you think the title of the note that made it appear in the search results there you know it's a uh, it's a good it's, question i just wanted to so i was building this test out my guess is it would have looked through it but um i can test that as a matter of fact i'll test that while you guys are answering some questions and we'll see what happens I can test that out while we're doing the show and see if those results appear as well. Good question. There you go. That's so how you increase that uh, viewer retention. Now BZ will have to keep watching until Brad yeah. uh, jumps back in with the answer. Hang on, BZ. It's going to be about an hour and 35 minutes into the show. Don't you worry. We're going to get right to it. <laughs> All righty. Let's get on into this next one here. Um, so this is a question from the Hermit Creation Agency. Uh, this is asked on one of our YouTube videos using field alias to pre-fill a Zoho form. Um, you know, and they're asking, is this function available by default in Zoho surveys? Um, what you'll find is that it is available by default inside of Zoho surveys if you, um, but only in the context of sending from CRM. So Inside of a CRM email template, you can actually insert kind of a special Zoho surveys link that will pull over information and pre-fill the form. The difference with the way that I'm showing it here for Zoho forms is that you could technically send that form from anywhere with pre-filled information. Um, whereas surveys can actually only pre-fill if you're sending directly through a CRM email template. But if that's how you're sending it, no problem at all to use Zoho surveys. So that is, you can get around that actually, Tyler. So all it's doing really? inside of CRM is appending a URL parameter to the survey link. So all you yeah. need to do is find that URL parameter and then you can send it from an email. You can create a public uh, yeah. or just a, a URL that will be sent to them somehow. Uh, and as long as yeah, that URL parameter is populated. ID, right? if, yeah. Yeah. It that it's like ZCRM. Yeah, something I forget what the actual URL parameter uh, label yeah. is, uh, but if you find it, then all you have to do is uh, append that parameter, and it will pre-fill everything based on your settings on the back end. That yeah, but you have to make sure whenever on your integration settings to the CRM that you select pre-populate uh, values with yep. uh, CRM values, or the other way around that is just to use URL parameters to populate everything, but. All right. Uh, next question here from Nick Mitchell posted on a YouTube video uh, from our, our last Azaz, uh, where he, uh, he asks, when can we get a creator app demo? So unfortunately, I don't have any demo or apps that I can demo. I do have a bunch of different apps and it's not really fair for me to demo any one app because they're all so different. But I, uh, uh, right now I'm working on a... Uh, why are you laughing, Greg? <laughs> it sounds like you're talking about your kids. <laughs> it's not yeah. fair. It's not fair. I love them all equally. They're great. I, I can't pick a favorite. They're just they're each you in their own special. <laughs> so some craziest things that we've built. Uh, we have a, a Zeopardy game. Uh, we basically recreated Jeopardy, uh, but using a creator app. Uh, so that's an example. We also do uh, full project management apps that we're using for our internal operations. And then also we have field service management apps that we've created for clients. So I could demo probably one of our internal ones, uh, but I think the best thing for you, if you're wanting to see demos, go into creator and just start creating an app and then choose from one of the templated apps 
because uh, they have 40, 50 different templated apps that you could get a good idea from from those what creator can do. And there's a bunch that you can take and then build on top of. And then if you have any questions, I'm going to point you to our YouTube uh, uh, playlist, which is our Zoho Creator tutorials. And I go through how to create forms, reports, pages, HTML snippets uh, with CSS and a bunch of other complex things. So uh, I think start there first. If you have any more questions, you can reach out to us and we can uh, walk you through maybe some some other demos. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit too much that I could demo in a, in a short video. I'd imagine it's tough to even know where to start, right? Because we joke about this sometimes. When you start a creator app from scratch, you have nothing on the page, right? It, there's nothing there unless you start with a template. So um, yeah, I mean, I would say the, the best demo, honestly, I mean, you want to look at creator not as an app, but as a platform. Right, it's a platform mm -hmm. to build apps on. Um, so some of Josh's walkthroughs of the backend settings and configuration are probably the best platform demo that uh, um, that you could find on it. And yeah, it's like crazy, I, mean, it's the hardest. I was going to say it's the hardest thing when someone says, "Well, how much is how long is it going to take to build this creator app? How much will it be?" And you're just like, "Well." You've, there's so much scoping that has to go into like what do you really want in this application? I mean, Josh <laughs> mentioned you know our our backend system, which actually is you know it's it's the backend system that runs everything here at Zanata, but it's also the front end to the portal. And so you know I don't know Josh how many thousands of hours have gone into that at the end of the day if you think about I, it. I um, can't. I don't even know. Another thing, and you could make creator apps not even look like creator apps. You can use CSS, um, cascading, cascading style sheets, and HTML to make it look really pretty and make it look any way you want. And but there's a lot of time that's involved in kind of doing that. But uh, I think great tip, Josh. Just go ahead and look through those and see what they can find. I think it'll give yeah. you a good idea. And the sky's the limit. If you become a client of ours, Nick, then you can actually get access to our portal. You can see how pretty that is. That's a creator app right there. There you go. This, this, this. It always sparks ideas when clients uh, see that thing. All righty, next question here. I think this one is teed up for me. So this is a question from uh, Timothy Quinn over at the Azaz Q&A. People are really using that. That's awesome. Um, post title is custom fields across modules. Timothy's question, I created two custom fields in my contacts module vertical and market segment. Uh, each has drop-down selectors, which are color-coded, uh, much like Greg's sushi selector. That's a throwback to a previous yeah. episode there. No idea how we landed on that topic, but uh, nonetheless, we soldier on. Question is, am I able to include these same fields in other modules, leads, accounts, deals, without having to manually, and create, or manually create and edit them um, to match the same drop-down selectors and color codes? So Timothy, the answer there is yes and no. Um, yes, you can definitely create one global set of options and associate it with multiple pick lists across leads, accounts, and deals. The one thing that does not apply for global sets right now is color coding. I would have to imagine that they're going to add that before long. Um, so my recommendation would be to use the global sets even if it means sacrificing the color coding for now, because I bet you they're going to add that and it will make life a whole lot easier. Um, you should be able to essentially edit one of those fields um, in the like modules and field section and convert the existing options over to a uh, global set and then just use that wherever you need it. The, the yeah, other thing that you could do, if you are, if you are handy with JavaScript, uh, there is now the opportunity for stylizing the record fields and both in the detail view and the list view with client scripting. You can change, you can highlight or or change uh, the appearance of some fields. So if you're a JavaScripter, you can also do that. You could just make a client script that just, regardless of you know if it finds that that field equals you know, whatever. So then you can only have to set it once there rather than having to do it for every time the pick list is being used. All right. Next question here from Danetta. Posted a comment on uh, one of our YouTube videos, Azaz, our last Azaz, about Creator. I'm not fully implemented in CRM yet. I'm thinking Creator could be a client portal where they can update their CRM info, also have a link in it to their itinerary, et cetera. Is that something to use Creator for? And 
it depends. Um, I love all these creator questions. It really, uh, we're getting a lot of traction and people are really interested the in creator. Busy week and, for you, Josh, this week. Yeah. <laughs> I would say generally, I always try to use creator as like the last option, um, only because it does take a lot of time and consideration to build out. But if you do go that route, then you have ultimate flexibility. So there's pros and cons to it. Um, but generally, if you're, just trying to display CRM info, CRM information, and maybe just very basic information from the CRM. I'm going to try to point you to CRM portal, just the standard CRM portal out of the box, because that might get you everything you need. Um, now you mentioned something about an itinerary and maybe other information you want to display that might get a little tricky with the CRM standard portal. So I'm not sure if that's going to be uh, easily doable. But you could always take a look at that and see what is possible in the in just the standard CRM portal because that is going to take uh, way less time to implement and uh, boot up at least a V1 version of that. Um, other options for portals, obviously, you or, uh, you also have the Z portals, uh, which we just did a YouTube video uh, webinar on Z portals. Was that today? Was it that today? Today, I think that it's today. Oh, it was, today. It was Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, it was on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so check that out because there's a lot of possibilities you can do with Z portals and connecting that with other Zoho apps. Maybe you have it connected to work drive or some other uh, links in there that you need to display. So obviously there is ways to do this inside of creator. Uh, certainly you can do that. It just takes a lot more integration and customization to, to get that yeah. set up. I think a lot of the times, right. It's, it's kind of like, um, you know, is it is it Goldilocks and the three bears, right? Where they've got like the three different bowls of porridge, right? And like a lot of times where people land is that CRM native portals too cold, creator is too hot, <laughs> and Z portals is just like right in the middle. It's perfect, <laughs> right? It's what you need. Uh, you know, that's again, we're happy to if if you want to reach out to Ned, happy to talk in more detail. But I think Josh, you, you answered that perfectly. I mean. You can always do it in creator, but it's uh, if you could do it in Z portals for what, like 50 bucks a month, maybe that would be a much more economical way to get things done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a little update for Beat Z here and Greg. I created a uh, document inside of WorkDrive called Test for Searching Text. And in it, I typed, I love the Archer Hotel. And uh, that was done immediately after uh, the, Greg asked me to do that. It still has not shown up in search, so it could be it's not parsing a while. Text of the documents. So it could take a little while. You never know. So we're I'll, I'll give these updates throughout the show, BZ. So hang in there. You never know. Yeah. All right. This one comes from Raymond Polanco, who asked on our YouTube uh, video about Sales IQ web visitor de-anonymization via Zoho CRM email clicks. This was uh, an implementation of the week uh, involving Bruno and Tyler. Do you remember the consultant who was on that one? Um, this one might have been me. I think this is for one of my one of my clients, actually. All right, great stuff. Raymond asks, "Hey, is there a video on how to activate the Sales IQ Web Visitor de-anonymization via Zoho CRM email clicks?" And uh, the answer is yes. I got a screen share for you. This will be an easy one. Knock it out lickety split. Uh, so as long as you are in a CRM email template that is associated to uh, contacts or leads, then when you are inserting a link, you can uh, establish what the URL is going to be. And then there's just this little checkbox to include sales IQ identifiers. And then it will automatically add those to uh, the link that gets put in the email. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you have to be in a contacts or leads uh, template as if you try to enter a deals template, for example, and do this same thing. Then that option does not appear. So just in case if, if you were following along with the video and you pulled up a template saying, I don't understand. It was on theirs. Why isn't it on mine? Maybe, maybe you weren't in the right module. So there you go. 
And so I think kind of one note on here, you know, Greg pointed out that you can only use that little checkbox there in the leads and contacts and, and not kind of in that deals section. You should be able to manually add right? That SIQ equals and, um, or SIQ email and those parameters to any link, as long as you're able to merge in the name and email of, uh, whoever you're sending it to just a little easier if you're in leads and contacts. Okay. Yeah, my guess. Yeah. I'm sure it's just a, a simple URL parameter that you can just append it. Maybe you could even send that from another email server outside of the CRM. All right, so uh, Daniel Pires is asking, is it only me? I have bipolar feelings for Zoho Mail. Are they bipolar or bipolar? I don't know if that's a word, but I love it, Daniel. Uh, love and hate it at the same time. Uh, the search option in Zoho Mail are awful, especially if you come um, from Google Suite. My Zoho Mail search results are flooded with mail that has nothing to do with the search query and does not join the conversation, even if I have the option selected. You have some hacks to make Zoho Mail search better. Um, you know, it's an every, I've got a, two search questions here in a row. Everybody's searching for something, man. Try Hare Krishna, What's Daniel. It? You know, maybe you'll find what you're looking for there. You never know. I don't know. Um, so, Daniel, uh, let me share my screen with you and uh, first commiserate. Yes, I think Zoho Mail search is um, not very good. Because it, it requires you remember all, you have to basically type all these, email text contains, uh, subject contains, and you can string these together and you can basically create a search that way. Much, much, much easier inside Zoho Mail. You click a drop down and you've got a really nice form and you can type all the search parameters you're looking for there to get exactly what you're looking for. Um, it's also not as, um, I don't think as intuitive in its searches either. Um, the only thing I can tell you is this, what I'm sharing on the screen here, which are all of the various parameters you can type in to uh, hone down your search, uh, you know, especially if, you know, the from date one is a big one or the date, if you know the date, you got it. But if you're like, oh, it was last week and you put date from that and then you put in contains or then you put in from, you might be able to hone down your search a little bit more. And at least that'll make it less frustrating for you. But other than that, uh, really not, uh, not much more you can do there. I don't know, guys. I mean, if you look at this, it's, it's, it is kind of a wonky little bit of a search uh, across the board inside Zoho Mail. Um, I like Zoho Mail like you do. Um, I have that bipolar relationship with it where, uh, you know, I like it most of the time, but honestly, it, it's, um, it, it's one of those things where as a company, we use Google Mail for almost everything. I use Zoho Mail across a couple other Zoho installs that I have. I like it just fine. Um, the calendar functionality in Zoho kind of can be a bit wonky. They've been working on that as well. Um, the apps are fine though for most people. Um, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, you're buying Zoho One, you've got a small company, you want to save the money, Zoho Mail, Zoho Calendar, they're going to get it done for you. Um, but you do sometimes have to sacrifice a little maybe ease of use uh, on some of those things. So anyway, wish I had a better answer for you. Hopefully those parameters will help you, Daniel. All right, and here is a, another question from uh, Raymond. Uh, I believe I had one uh, from him earlier. Can you connect Click with Learn to use Click to find certain knowledge base articles? This was on our Zoho Click Full Product Tutorial 2022. Well, Raymond, how how I wish that we could. Oh, you you hit you you've hit a bit of a nerve. For me, I, I love using Zoho Learn. We use it for our own internal, uh, you know, manuals, uh, solutions, guides, that sort of thing. But unfortunately, yeah, they're just there at this time. There is no API for here uh, querying Zoho Learn. So unfortunately, no way, no way to talk to it with another app. Uh, not yet. Um, I keep I keep uh, I keep poking the Zoho dev team saying, hey, um, got, got any APIs to learn yet? No? Nothing. All right. I'll, I'll be back. I hear Zoho Learn is still a little bit shell-shocked from COVID, Greg. This wants to kind of stay isolated like that. You know what I mean? It's got still, uh, it's class stranger danger. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's got some problems there, but uh, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting you say that because when Zoho does open an API up on an application, it's just it's just like we're all like doing happy dance, right? Yeah, 
you know, because then all of yep. a sudden all of the things that become available and all the things you can do. Yeah. Um, it was it work drive that had like the API document wasn't published anywhere. We just kind of found it. Oh, it was published. <laughs> yeah, it was on a uh, public writer document for like, I think Fashion. more than a year before they actually put it onto a proper web page. Um, yeah, but I'll take it. Hey, if they want to put the Zoho Learn one on a writer doc, that's fine. Just give us the link. Um, yeah, we're we're eagerly awaiting that as well, Raymond. But I guess then there, Greg, hypothetically, imagine there is a search API. You could build a click bot, right? You could ask it questions, you know, find me an article about XYZ. And, and obviously there'd have to be some structure yeah, it, to it. But it, Yeah, again, it would just depend on however it is. That they, and maybe this is why they don't add it, because this is kind of a complicated thing of yeah. uh, how do you, uh, yeah, how do you search uh, uh, for a typical knowledge base? Because, you know, these articles can be, I mean, they're all writer docs, right? So it's like, okay, well, I mean, it, it would have, a, it'd be really tough to search like by, just by content, because you've got, you know, all sorts of different formatting things in there to try to figure out exactly. Yeah. What this is. But uh, if anything, if we could just get the, if we could just be able to search by tag, because you can add tags yeah. to uh, to articles. So the the dream the dream would be that you would have an API call of you know get get all articles associated with this tag, and then just get a get a list of those. That would be that would be heavenly. And then for sure you could use that uh, to uh, you know send like a click bot if you wanted to ask a click bot, hey, give me some articles on this. Hey, this question comes from Paul Webb over at the clubs and on a general discussion area. Uh, Paul asks, when we set up the business, we had one email address of mine. All inquiries and everything else came through it. All was well. Our second employee who was part-time would just log in as me and access the emails, etc. All good. Now we have more employees and this is no longer practical. I know we should have a company address such as info and we are slowly pushing that out. But in the meantime, I need to make my original email associated with my account on Zoho One accessible to the whole company. Please, can someone explain the best way of doing this? Shared folders are not great. Should I forward all emails? Okay. Um, well, Paul, there's a lot going on here. Um, <laughs> you need to buy licenses for all of your employees is uh, really the real practical answer on this. Um, Zoho One is... Uh, you know, basically set up just that way. I mean, even if you're just doing partial employee price pricing, if you do that, if you're if you're paying for Zoho One, not all employee pricing, kind of the all a cart Zoho One, then you can actually set up separate emails in Zoho Mail. They'll let you do that on the side for people that are outside of that core Zoho One group. If you have Zoho One all employee pricing, you kind of need to have licenses for everybody in the company. Um, really bad idea. I mean, to make your, I mean, forwarding all your emails, that's probably not a great security thing to do that uh, across the board. Um, making, to make as a whole, that email accessible, if you wanted to just have one login, then you're giving everybody super admin rights to your entire Zoho One organization and your CRM. Um, so I hate to say it, but it really, the only way that I think you can go about this properly is to uh, just add licenses for everyone. Guys, I mean, any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think no. once you have licenses for everyone, then you can forward that email to Zoho Desk or create a Zoho Desk shared inbox. And that's going to be the best place to manage your, your team inbox. Uh, I can think of the statuses around it, assign it to a particular individual, and then that's your uh, list of support requests or uh, internal emails that you need to go through. Um, I love Zoho Desk. So if you can get in there and start playing around with that, I think you'll, you'll find a lot of value and uh, especially just managing and structuring that workflow is, is important. But again, you're going to need a license user or a, a license for every Zoho One user. Sweet. And on to the next question here. Uh, this is a question from Joe Morris over on the Q&A for Azaz post title. Uh, I love this one. Friendship relationships. Um, <laughs> question is, how do I import into Zoho? So I'm assuming we're talking Zoho CRM. Um, obviously, you can be running imports into a lot of different apps across the system, but CRM is most common. So that's where my brain goes here. We actually have a video 
It's called something kind of cheeky. It's like how to import anything into Zoho CRM. Um, we did get a funny comment from someone who highlighted one thing that video doesn't cover, so it should be almost everything into Zoho CRM. But that should give you a pretty good walkthrough, Joe, of what you're going to need to do. Essentially, just make sure that your file's nice and clean. You can either use the data migration section or a kind of per module import to get this data in. Uh, but I'd highly recommend checking out that video. We'll um, we'll leave a link to it in this little response that we're leaving you so that uh, you can get right on over there. But that should take care of most of what you need. And if it's not the CRM that you're uh, dealing with, then the basic premise of go create like a few test records, uh, just a few dummy records in there, and then look in the settings for the particular app for like maybe a, a report feature or an export feature. And if you can, uh, if you if it'll let you export the records from a given module, then you'll be able to get a file where you can see what each of those uh, column headers are called for each of those different pieces of data. And then you just need to have your source information match that same kind of column formatting and Unless Zoho provides you a sample CSV file, um, then you can use that that export file as a template to help you import uh, import your data into whatever you know, whatever system it is. And as always, the the my piece of advice is try to start at like the highest part of the hierarchy. You know, if you've got relations of you know like accounts, contacts, deals, import the accounts first then import the contacts, then import the deals. Um, so always, oh, it's like it's it's like putting your oxygen mask on on the airplane. Please, if you have any children <laughs> with you, please put the mask on yourself first before you put it on your children. That's some good. There's a lot of nuance to today. it, too. I mean, also, like <laughs> if you're importing to just create records or versus importing to add, uh, update records, it's uh, very important that you have a unique key when you're doing that import and each app is going to import a little bit differently uh so if you're importing the crm we got a video on that uh, i don't think i have any videos on importing to creator or uh desk or any of the other apps but they are very different uh similar but different so um yeah they're uh just try to find that sample csv if you can and then uh, follow those rules based on that app that you're you're trying to import into but they're all Sounds like very we've got different there's make. a lot of nuance yeah all right last question here from scott french posted an article inside of uh, club z uh, just a q a for azaz and what is the best practice for using zoho forms to create a new account and deal on a mobile device i currently have a lookup field for them to verify the person is not already in the system and if they are it populates all the information and they just fill out the deal information. If they are not in the system, how can I skip the requirement of the lookup field? I'm using one form to do this task. So inside of forms, uh, you do have the option of using advanced fields, and one of those advanced fields is a CRM integration field. Basically acts as a lookup field to a CRM record, and you can look up to a deal or account. And what Scott's asking is, Whenever I'm adding that lookup field, yes, it will pre-populate information, but if they're not in the system, then I can't actually choose a value in that lookup field. And the problem is, is whenever you're creating a lookup field to a CRM, within forms, it's always a mandatory field. You cannot add an integration field and it not be mandatory. So unfortunately, it's not going to be easily done inside of uh, forms. If you want to have some sort of integration where you're you're looking up into a CRM record and you're searching first, that sort of functionality is only possible inside of Creator. Um, now, you might be able to bypass the need for searching and you just you're going to fill out the account information either way, uh, but it's going to require some manual input. And then you just need to make sure that the account name matches whatever you have in the CRM. So if you don't need to worry about searching the CRM, then forms will work great. Uh, but if you're going to search and then you need it to pre-populate, then 
that record has to exist. Otherwise, you're going to have to choose a dummy record and then it's going to be all wonky. Uh, so really, I, you know, I might just be biased, uh, but creator is going to probably be your best bet uh, to get that to work. And inside a creator, you're going to, you can choose lookup fields. And if when you search, you can't find it, then it doesn't have to be a mandatory lookup. And then you're just going to fill out the information. Now, the only downside to that is it's going to require a lot of custom integration. So if you need each one of those fields to integrate with the uh, CRM, you're going to have to write a custom function to do that using Deluge. Uh, same thing if when you select an account or select an, a deal and you want that to pre-populate values on the form, that's going to be another workflow with the custom function using Deluge. Um, it is possible, but it's going to take some customization and some uh, Deluge to get it to work inside a creator. Can you guys think of any other way to get that to work? No, I mean, creator's kind of your only way. And and just to clarify too, Josh, with a creator form like this, you can use it as a user of creator or as not a user of creator, right? This could be sent out externally okay. as well. So if you had like yep. field text that needed to use this that weren't in your CRM license, yep. they could still do it um, the same way they can inside of Zoho forms. Just you can actually kind of control that workflow a little more. Yeah. Yeah. To get that to work, you just need to publish the form or the report. Uh, if it, you can make both of them accessible uh, to public yeah. users. Listen. Got it. Yep. And a little update for you, BZ. No go. No go on uh, searching inside of a document here. You know, my guess is that's probably, I mean, the indexing on that, you know, what if someone decided to search for the word the or something, right? Yeah. Could. <laughs> I mean, it could be. The indexing might be a little <laughs> might be a little messy on that whole thing. So my guess is that's probably why. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, I guess with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, Josh, you got anything going on this weekend? Pick what we up. I do. Yes, I have my wedding reception this weekend, so I'm gonna be out uh, uh -huh. most of this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not right after this. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yes, thank you. Hey, we want to thank everybody for watching Zaz and supporting us over here at Zanata. If you would like to get in touch with us, please just head over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting. We'll be happy to chat with you. On the website is where you'll find complete episodes of our podcast, The CRM Zen Show, where we cover all the news in the world of Zoho every single week. Uh, if you'd like that news delivered to your inbox every Monday, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. And as always, uh, we would love and appreciate if you would like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Wednesday.